Hey, what's going on guys? Chris back with you with another unboxing and review video. Perfect opportunity. It's raining outside. We're supposed to stay home with what's going on with the world, but we're going to unbox this today. And then of course, when the sunshine comes, we're going to be fully testing it. I hope you're having a great day today so far. This is the newest solar security outdoor camera by the company. Salome, I believe you pronounce it. S-O-L-I-O-M. I've actually reviewed two of the other cameras before. Check out the links. They make security cameras that are solar powered. And this is their newest one. I'm looking forward to taking it through all the test ropes. And this camera is the S600. Let's get it out of the box and we're going to run all the specs by you guys. Hey guys, if you're new here, welcome. We have a lot of fun here. Smash that subscribe button down below and turn on your bell notifications so when fresh content comes out, you're the first to know. And just like all my unboxing and review videos, guys, in the description box below is going to be this exact same camera. You guys in the UK, if they sell it in the UK, I will have you linked down below as well. So after the review is over, you guys can pick one up yourself or read more what others are talking about it. Let's go ahead and check that out right there. That is the manual and it looks like a little template for installation. And let's go ahead and lift this out and then we'll go ahead and talk about the specifications. Here is our solar panel right on the top here. Be careful that is connected down below. You just got to pull up that little cord there and there is our connection port for a nice large solar panel here. And if you guys are curious about the exact dimensions, I will see if they have them listed in the manual. If not, it should be in the link below. We have our mount right over here. We'll get to all that. Some screws. And that cable looks about tip to tip down here, approximately about maybe a foot and a half or so. All right, coming to this area of the box here, let's go ahead and lift this out. You do have a cable over here on this side, and that looks to be it. And that's going to be your typical two foot USB to micro USB charging cable. And that's going to be to charge the camera initially, and then the solar panel will keep it charged. There is a QR code on the back, back over here that we can't show. That is for app purposes to scan that on your app. But let's go ahead and take a look at the camera right here. This again is a motorized turret camera. And that is full 1080p HD with a FOV, which means field of view of 160 degrees. Frames per second is 15 frames per second. And it can actually take an eight to 64 gigabyte memory card, which is located on the bottom here. I've just go ahead and cover that up. It's gonna be a lot easier than trying to edit that out, that QR code reader. So underneath here, we need to unscrew that, which comes with it as well. You have your anchors, your little screws, your Allen wrench. Uh, we're gonna get back to the camera here in just a second. I believe that's it for the box. So after you take off that little compartment there, you have your reset button here, and you probably wanna connect it over the app before you do install it, just to make sure if you need a Wi-Fi extender, if this is gonna be far away from your router, etc. And your micro SD card right there, that slot. That is for recording directly to the card. And that again, eight gigabyte to 64 gigabyte. Here is your speaker right here for two-way audio. And the back of it here is a nice soft pad if that's going up against a wall of some sorts that you don't want to scratch up. And then coming around again to the QR code reader that uh, I want to not have over the internet. So the antennas can rotate around like this and like this here. And looking back at the front of the camera, this is a nice, um, I believe that is light steel or possibly, yeah, I think it's just light steel. And then this is plastic here, this is plastic here, but this is all steel all the way here. And then the mount, I believe is steel as well. You have your weatherproofing cord right here for connecting that to the solar panel. And you have your microphone right here for again, two way audio for you to hear what they're saying. And then the speaker on the back is gonna be for them to listen to you, what you're saying through the app. Here's your infrared LED light right here for night vision. Here is your ambient light sensor here. And here is your white light LEDs here and here. And down here is your PIR. Now you guys can pause this and kind of look through it a little bit more at length, but I'll run a few specs by you guys real quick. Wi-Fi, we're gonna go off 2.4 gigahertz. The battery is a 9,000 milliamp battery. It has three battery cells inside and those are 18650 batteries. Standby is max six months, power consumption 2W run, 0.012W standby. Those are the operating temperatures right there. It pretty much covers the entire world. Humidity. Uh, running Android 2.3 or above, iOS 7.0 or above, and there is your night vision range, 32 feet, and your motion detection, 110 degree, 18 feet. To begin 
All right, guys, after I plugged in the cord, that actually turned on the camera, and it's actually saying that it's ready to pair. We have a little blue blinking light right here as well. Okay, now before we do set this up, we're gonna actually have to charge the battery box, which is located on the bottom of the solar panel here. And so underneath these little tabs, you have the charging port right here, and use the provided charging cable to charge that. Instructions say up to about six to eight hours for that to fully be charged before you do hang this up and install it. And here on this side is your on and off button for the battery box. And then you connect obviously this cable to the camera and then use the provided screws to go ahead and screw that in so that won't be loose. And so obviously right now we could just pull that out like that. So here's a side shot of what it looks like screwed in. And then obviously go ahead and attach your cables here and here. And before you do turn it on, insert your SD card, then connect this. That will provide power to the camera and then it will prompt you through the directions how to set it up. So we're gonna go ahead and put it on the charger, download the app, and we're gonna run it through the test runs. All right, guys, I wanna go ahead and show you the app now. And unfortunately, normally I screen capture this on my phone and it's a lot better, but uh, for some reason, this has happened to the last two security cameras that I have reviewed. And there might be a security feature within the app, meaning that I cannot screen capture it as I have in the past. So anyway, we have our Android tablet right in front of us. Let's go ahead and take a look at at the app a little bit closer. So right here is your main controls right here. You have your motorized controls right here, which is really nice. So let's go ahead and show you there. We'll go ahead and tap it a couple times and the camera will move down and it can go pretty far because I have it mounted in a way. Okay, that's as far as it goes down. So you're looking at the grass pretty much all the way behind it. Let's go ahead and just hold it down. And that is, I think we go up a little bit more. There we go. I think that's as high as it goes there. And sorry, we have a little bit of a reflection here. You can see kind of my hand in the screen here, but we're actually on standard definition right now. And it looks a lot better. This Android tablet does have a full HD screen, but it looks so much better on what I'm filming on my Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus. Let's go ahead and hit the HD and it crisps it up as you just saw right there. So again, the quality looks so much nicer on my phone, but this is just to show you if you had a cheaper Android tablet like this one. And let's go ahead and look at it here. As you can see right up here in the top menu here, we have 1080p, so you know you are on HD. If you're getting lag time, you might wanna kick that back down to standard definition. HD goes away, let's go ahead and click it back on. Now up here in the menu here, you see this little eyeball symbol with one. Now when I logged in with my Samsung phone so that this device, the Android tablet and my Samsung phone were viewing it, that counter goes up to two. That's a nice feature that would go up however many devices are connected. As we can see here, my barbecue, nice wide view of range, jacuzzi over here, surfboard, you can make that out very clearly. So if you wanna do a screen capture of a photo, let's say there was an intruder right there and you wanted to save it to your device's memory, go ahead and hit the snapshot right there, or you can go ahead and hit that one for record. And as you can see here, we are recording. There's a little counter there, four seconds. Go ahead and hit that. So just confirmed when I did that, it actually saved to my gallery on my Samsung S8 Plus. Or you go into the main menu here and you see cloud video, your albums, you go ahead and hit that. And then obviously it will be right here. There's my video and there's my still shot right there. So that will save in your apps album. And it's saved on my camera roll as well. Now in the common settings of the app here are a couple things you might wanna play around with. You can do notifications, permissions, auto run. If we go back, the default resolution is standard definition or you could up that. Mute when playback is off, mute when viewing device is on, turn off alarm vibration, turn off alarm ringtone or you could clear catch as well. I did notice on my Samsung S8 Plus, when there was motion detection, it actually used my ringtone to tell me that there was motion detection. That could get pretty annoying pretty quickly. So you might have to mess around with those settings. And this main screen right here, will show you that you are online, of course, with your date and time up there in the corner there. And we will, of course, be showing you night vision here in the video. But if you want to subscribe to their cloud service, then obviously you would have their cloud service. But I do have my 
micro SD card in there. So let's go ahead and see what it has picked up. That did record 1080p. And it looks like what's happening is I need to mess around with my notifications because let me go ahead and back this down just a little bit here. So as you can see here, here are all my notifications and it wakes it up and it starts recording on my micro SD card. Right here is 59 seconds, 31 seconds, 47 seconds, 22 seconds. Some of these might be false alarms. So you definitely want to be maybe a little bit careful with what you are recording or your push notifications so it's not really disturbing to you. All right guys now we're going to do a test of the audio feature. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to play a clip as I'm just inside of my living room door and I'll approach the camera telling you about the distance of the feet that I'm in. Let's go ahead and listen in now. All right, I was gonna edit this clip into the video, but unfortunately, Sony Vegas Pro, my editing software doesn't like the format of whatever it records to. So I'm gonna be showing you the audio over my computer. I've taken the SD card out, so let's listen up here. I'm about 16 feet away. Sorry if that was a poor job of being able to get it on camera, but the audio does work well as I approached it. You know, I was very faint inside here, and then as you pull in about 10 feet or so, if there was intruders right around this area, you could hear their conversations perfectly. Now I do want to mention that the app does run better on my Samsung S8 Plus phone. It's just a lot better of a device, it's quicker. This cheaper Android tablet does get some lag time in the app, unfortunately. So that's just something to keep in mind. This is a review video. And if you're gonna be viewing this app on a cheaper Android tablet, or an older Apple iPad, that might hinder some benefits of lag time, meaning for video playback when you go into your TF card right here. So it fires up one pretty quickly, or decently I should say. Yeah, here we go here. So it fires it up pretty quickly, but I think it starts to lag, at least on this device, starts to lag pretty good when I hit another one. Let's go ahead and hit another one here. And actually I did pretty good this time, so I'm not sure what the deal was. There's me. <laughs> Let me see if I can do something or other. So I don't know if that's my internet connection. Let me try to just play another one right off the bat. Okay, so right now for some reason it's going pretty good. Now it's playing even though there's nothing there. It probably picked up some wind false detection. Unfortunately, I do have my settings on high motion detection. So let's go ahead and go down, scroll down. Uh, you can't see that, but I'm scrolling down, hitting another one in my menu down here. Okay, so guys, it's actually firing up pretty quickly now. I'm glad I actually caught that on camera. About 20 minutes ago when I was playing around with this, it was just going in some circle the whole entire time. Uh, but now it seems to be a lot better when I kind of refreshed it. I canceled out of the whole app, fired it back up. Uh, it seems to be running okay right now. But again, we're gonna leave that in there. It's a review video and it wasn't working fantastically on my Android tablet. It was quicker on my phone. Okay, so let's go ahead and use the left one now and we'll show you how far we can go over here. And this is what I'm talking about here. So I'm catching this on camera as well. I went back to live view and we just get this circle right here and it just is not clicking in. So let me go ahead and exit off of that and we'll go ahead and get back in and it should fire up right away. Okay, so here we go here. So I was actually messing around with the key controls. That's why it's way over there. Okay, now we're gonna cut over to the left-hand side uh, and then we're gonna go all the way to the right. Now it's gonna look a little funny because I don't have it mounted exactly how it should be. It's just on a plant hook out there. And so I'll just kind of show you here. So we're gonna go ahead and work our way over. And because of the angle, I'll show you guys how it's mounted. That's why it looks a little bit crooked over there as well. But as you can see here, we can go all the way pretty much behind it. Look at that. That's really cool. That is a fantastic feature. Uh, and then let's go ahead and go all the way, you can see the neighbor's house in the backyard, going all the way around my corner, my neighbor's house over here. And I think that's as far as we can go to the right, yes. So you're just a little bit back over here to the right, you can't see. But uh, I'm pretty sure we can actually, let's go back one more time, I'll speed this up in post. Okay, so see this pillar? That's what we just saw on the right hand side, so you're it's, I mean, barely anything is missing out of the production of that there. And then of course we can go further down here. 
see all the grass. And again, sorry, I'm just tapping. Let me lower that down a little bit. I'm just tapping it. it. seems to work a little bit better than trying to hold it. Let's just hold it. Okay, it's working pretty decent when I hold it. I'm holding it down. No, it's not working. Uh, but when I tap it, it starts working. So eh, I, I just tap it if I were you. All right, so we've already gone around that side. And we'll go back up. That's fantastic, guys. That field of view, being a motorized camera like that, that is awesome, especially if you have it mounted. Like, So what I would probably want to do is I probably want to have it like mounted like over here so it gets the sunshine during the morning period. That way you could have all that field of view or where it is actually is actually really nice because that way you could see down the corridor by the shop there. You could see over here if uh, burglars came in from the uh, gate over there uh, and then the patio. So we are on the top. Like I mentioned, we can't go up any further than that. And that was all on SD, by the way. So we saw it just crisp up even more. And again, like I keep mentioning, it looks a lot better on the Samsung display rather than this Android tablet. All right, so let's go ahead and go outside. Let me show you how I've mounted it. And there is a blue LED indicator light that you can turn off in the settings right here. It's enabled and then you can disable that so that the camera is completely black out. There is again a small LED blue indicator light. We'll go ahead and get some footage of that right now. And then of course your detection sensitivity, I have it on high and you can mess around with those settings like I mentioned earlier. So as we just saw in the video, my solar panel is not directly in the sunlight right now. There are afternoon sun rays coming through my patio, as we can see right down here. But that has been hanging up for over a week now. Probably, I think we're upwards of a week and a half. And that battery indicator has not gone down at all. Again, after fully charging it before you do hang it up. And I believe that means it's actually maintaining a charge. We're gonna look back at the app, of course, during night vision and see if that symbol looks the same with that kind of charge symbols. Maybe that will look different during the evening and nighttime hours, but it's doing a fantastic job. That is not lowered at all in a week, week and a half or so. Now here under your playback here, we also see the date here. So you would just scroll back and go to the appropriate day, whatever you wanna do, and it would load up there. Let's go ahead and hit that, okay, cool. So we can actually see right here on the menu that we have our date month calendar here. So we can actually go back to the 15th. Let's go ahead and hit okay. And that will take us to the 15th and we can see everything that we recorded. So that's actually really cool. So we can actually see that we have recorded for one week. And then my guess is when my 16 gigabyte memory card fills up, it'll probably just rewrite it back over, meaning that it will start to record the newest day, delete the last day. That's why I'd recommend probably getting the maximum if you want to keep all of your footage. All right, let's go ahead and look at night vision here. And as you can see, once you tilt the tablet sideways, you can get a full view. The only problem though, is that we don't have any touch buttons to rotate the camera. You can brighten or darken it here but uh, we don't have any other touch panels over here. So we gotta go back this direction. But before we do, I do wanna show you the clarity of it. And sorry again for my reflection here in the tablet reflection, but you can see my Edison bulbs very clearly here. And as you can see, it's a little bit hazy right here on the edges. And here and here, my guess is it's probably reflectiveness off of the metal frame of the camera. But as we can see here, it's pointing down. You can easily see the beach cruiser, our door, the surfboard over here, the stones. So that's actually very nice. The barbecue once again, right over here. Plants on the table are a little bit really shiny, obviously, because that's the direction it's heading straight into right here in this vicinity right here. But you can see the Edison bulb way over here as well. All right, let's go ahead and take a look this way here. Now, once you do come to this layout, we have up here, like I mentioned earlier, you can see the battery indicator here. And so that stays fully charged during the day and then drops down, especially in a high traffic area. And that I am sorry, we were in SD the whole entire time for that last one. So let's go ahead and show you now another really key feature. 
you hit the light bulb here and oh you see you guys see that right there oh my goodness look, look at that look at that it's like a little rat or something oh that's creepy i'm glad we caught that on camera wow that was you see its little eyes that was crazy okay so let's go ahead and tap this light it uh there we go. Okay, so you gotta go back in order to turn it on. Okay guys, I was actually watching it here. I think it's a possum. I don't like possum. Okay, so let's go ahead and click that and we'll go off and then it will click back on automatically right there to night vision there. Let's go ahead and get it back into HD and it's nice and crisp there. Okay, so you start off with it uh, red like this and then it looks like what we do is we hit this and that activates the lights on the actual camera and then it really lights it up. So now you can see everything in color. That's really cool, a jacuzzi over there and all the plants here. So that is a great feature. So if you're not really into the night vision while you're monitoring it, you can go ahead and click on the light. Obviously, that's a pretty bright light as it's shining all over my patio. You probably don't want that on all night. That might drain the battery a little quicker. I'll leave that up to you guys, but that is a great feature. Now, if you are curious, let's go ahead and tilt it sideways here while I tell you my next point I was thinking about. There we go there, and it's so bright, you can actually see inside my house to my chair and my dividing wall from my kitchen to my living room. That's really nice. And so, obviously, you are seeing on screen, you're seeing some squiggly lines over here here I cannot see that with my naked eye that is due to the lighting in here see as you can pull it back but it is hitting off of the bicycle reflector as you can see there now one thing if you are wondering the lag time I was testing it earlier today and it looks like we're about a half second lag time I would watch my phone and about a half second later my hand would raise so there's about a half second lag time if you were curious about that all right, next up is gonna be the speaker function. If you were to hit this button here and speak into it, obviously it is now 12.51 a.m. in the morning, so I will not do that for my neighbor's sake. All right, now we're gonna be testing the audio. So again, it goes off of the speaker, and to limit the reverb, we'll go ahead and leave our little speaker off right here, but you just tap this here, and there might be some reverb with all the microphones. Hey, what's happening? Whoops, hold on one second. We're getting some reverb there. Let's go ahead and tap that off there. Hey, hey, remove yourself from the premise. Hey, remove yourself from the premise. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here now. Get out of here. So it looks like, again, it's, go it's going off of Wi-Fi. It's going off of Wi-Fi. Okay, there we go. Sometimes it, sometimes it didn't catch my whole sentence. Sometimes I didn't catch my whole sentence. All right. Leave now. Leave now. Leave now. Leave now. Get out of here. All right. So it seems like if you talk really, really fast, it might uh, not catch that. But slow and talking normal, it works great. Let me go ahead and try that one more time. I would like you to be removed from the premise from the premise. All right, guys, so let me go ahead and cut that off there. Not perfect, but works well. And again, this all depends upon your Wi-Fi connection, etc. You might have better experience, fully clear, speaking as fast as you can, but again, it's a review video. Something I do wanna clarify as well, that this is not continuous recording, but let me show you what it does pick up. So when it does sense motion, it will start recording and that's what comes to your SD card for recording. I've actually pulled the SD card out of my camera and I'm viewing it on my computer here. Uh, let's go ahead and show you. Here I am, it picked it up right when I was kind of coming out the door there and very nice. I have my Edison bulbs on, so obviously the night vision is not on. You definitely could see exactly what I'm wearing. You could see my height, here's another one here. Uh, this is during the daytime. I believe this might have been a false notification. Uh, maybe the wind or maybe a hummingbird flew in front of it there. And lastly, I just want to summarize with push notifications, something that I have been playing around with. You guys might experience something different, but this is just what I'm experiencing on my Android. So when I have the app 
open, again, running in the background of my phone, push notifications come into my phone. When the app is not running in the background, I am not getting any notifications. That unfortunately is an ad developer issue with the app, not the hardware. So hopefully they see this and a developer can fix that. I am receiving all of the recordings in my list. I'm just not getting those push notifications to my phone unless I have the app running in the background. So I'm just letting you guys know that. All right, cutting in real quickly uh, on the video before I do wrap it up. I had the app open on my Android tablet and I had it closed on my Samsung phone. And as the camera is picking up motion, it goes from red to blue, the indicator light. And I was getting push notifications on my phone when the Android tablet was open, but this one was not. I closed them both down to experiment with it and now I'm not getting any push notifications to my phone so hopefully the developers can see that and figure out the problem so until they did if you've already purchased it and you have a cheaper tablet somewhere leave it open or just leave it open on your phone running in the background and that will temporarily fix it until the developers do fix the issue about not having it open in the background and still pushing it to your phone or device. Well, just a quick update. As I'm editing the video, I walked by the camera a few times to get another cup of coffee, etc. And even though both devices, the phone and the Android were closed down, the app closed down in the background, it actually pushed a few notifications. So it works sometimes and it doesn't work sometimes. So guys, hopefully the video has helped you with an informed decision about the product and letting you know if you wanna purchase it or not. Again, it's linked in the description box below if you guys wanna read more reviews about it. Pick one up yourself. The hardware is great. The camera does a fantastic job. The solar panel does an amazing job. A couple little tweaks they need to fix, but hopefully they'll jump on that soon. And remember guys, any video that I do make, product that I do review, please don't go into debt for anything I do review, but if you have the cash and you feel like purchasing it, go right ahead. Again, that link is below. Hit that thumbs up button, subscribe on your way out. We'll see you guys on the next review. My name is Chris. Take care. Bye-bye. Don't let the party stop, guys. Hit one of these videos, continue to watch, and we'll see you soon.